I think things got strange and weird enough in the media this weekend that an update video was definitely due. And I mean an update because we talked about the MVP race on the podcast. And I literally said in the event that LeBron James had a good weekend, if they defeated the Bucks, they defeated the Clippers and he played well, the media would assure that we had a completely different MVP race by the time we woke up Monday morning. And lo and behold, here we are. It was very predictable. You got actual ESPN hosts, sports analysts going as far to say that LeBron James is now first place in the MVP race. And that's why I'm dropping another video about it after the podcast, because this last week has been the strangest and most blatant effort I have ever seen by the media trying to force something by the sports media. I, I really don't recall ever seeing anything like this. So if you recall my barbershop talks from last year, literally around this point in the season, I think that video may just be turning a year old. Maybe I'm a couple of weeks off, but I made a barbershop talk on this channel called the counter MVP theory. And it was basically pointing out how every season or most seasons anyways, when we have have a clear MVP when everybody knows who's going to be the MVP at the end of the year, there ends up being this movement in the media, whether it's Twitter, whether it's actual certified sports media outlets like ESPN, whatever it is, there becomes this really concentrated effort to say, hey, actually, this super obvious winner of the MVP now that we're near the end of the season, maybe he's not actually the MVP. Maybe it's this guy. Maybe it's this number two guy. And last year when it happened, it, it was Paul George. There was the whole MVPG campaign. And that's where we have to make our first distinction because I feel like like people are just really bad at nuance on the internet anyways people choose to be bad at nuance maybe it's a lack of characters you can't necessarily say everything you want to say in a tweet i've run into that problem before but it's like they want you to always be as extreme as possible so you can't not think that this guy is mvp but also be giving him credit at the same time so last year i i knew for i knew no matter what at the point that the mvpg campaign was going on i knew he was not surpassing Giannis. i knew nobody was surpassing Giannis, but i still thought pg was playing awesome and he did have an mvp campaign it wasn't mvp season but they were people doing the same exact thing last year where i remember a specific game he had a really good game against the jazz i believe it went into overtime i believe he had like 40 points and there was people like oh uh, are we sure he's not gonna win i i don't know i think he i think he's close to leading he wasn't anywhere close to leading we all knew that the people tweeting it knew it yet i i think it's this inherent need for debate this inherent need for competition and for things to be close that make people start doing things like this because admittedly it's more fun when we have things to actually talk about i myself even tweeted probably about three weeks ago that i missed there being an actual race because Giannis had been running away with it throughout the season he'd been running away with it so much that i felt like everyone was discussing the only discussion was whether he was going to be unanimous or not so that's the problem right because all in that tiny amount of time again i tweeted that three weeks ago everybody kind of in unison at that time believed yeah this is this is this is a Giannis thing up until the beginning of last week everybody agreed that it, it was that far away that we were having unanimous discussions so all in the span of seven days the conversation went from is Giannis unanimous to seeing sports analysts like Jay Williams tweet that LeBron is now in first place after this weekend what how in the hell do you go from where we were to where we are in a week and the reason I say I've never seen anything like this because at least from where I saw it it started with Kendrick Perkins it started after LeBron had a good game last week and Kendrick Perkins tweeted out that the MVP race was actually a lot closer than anybody thought and the floodgates opened after that everyone seemed to follow suit now even he the, the person who I believe started this even Perkins has not gone as far to say that Giannis has just flat out been replaced this quickly but I've seen Jay Williams on it now I've seen Skip Bayless say it I've seen it I've seen it in well <laughs> Skip Bayless just says he says a lot of things but I couldn't tell if he was saying that this time because the media votes on the award and he sees the narratives forming now that's why he believes that LeBron has replaced them I'm not sure if that's the angle he was taking but I've seen it in multiple places Places. And here's the thing, right? Just like in multiple seasons, you can think multiple people are having an MVP type year. And you can think that without believing that certain players are actually going to win it or saying that they're actually going to win it. Is LeBron having an MVP type year in one of the most incredible seasons we've seen? Absolutely. He's now leading the league in assists. He has great defensive moments against the best players like he did this weekend. Absolutely. I don't think we'll ever see anything in our lifetimes like this from a 35 year old in the NBA. So I am enjoying every bit of it. And see, you can think all those things and give him credit without doing a complete 180 in the span of seven days. You can do that. You can even believe that he is still the league's best player without thinking that he just snatched the MVP award in what wasn't a very close race with a couple of key performances.
business. And this is how people set themselves up for failure. This is how people set themselves up to be mad for no reason when we get to the actual MVP ceremony or the stupid ass award show that they do in June and the player that we all knew was going to win it ends up winning it and then people go, oh, that's not fair. We had this guy like this guy was robbed. No, nobody was robbed. It's just that there was an entire season before you decided to start really paying attention at the very end and during that entire season there was a clear winner and then as the season started to close a couple of events happened that may have made it closer because in all honesty yes with this next week and the fact that Giannis is now going to miss a couple of games and LeBron is going to keep playing great and we know that this is a what have you done for me lately league yeah I think at this at this point there's probably no chance that there's going to be a unanimous Giannis MVP because the media is the one voting on this and this is where the narratives are coming from so definitely not unanimous but when he still ends up with enough first place votes to win and let me, let me put the caveat in here I believe that the, the trend lines would have to say the same so LeBron keeps doing what he's doing but Giannis keeps doing what he was doing all season despite this little bump that LeBron got in the last week Giannis if it trended that way Giannis would still end up with enough votes to win and people will claim that LeBron got robbed that's exactly where this is going I think the only way LeBron would actually win it is if Giannis started missing significant time over this last what do we have like a month a month and two weeks maybe before the playoffs I think Giannis would have to do really really poorly which I don't see happening but he would have to do really really poorly and miss a lot of games for LeBron to truly overtake him that's where I think the race was before we came into this week now I'm going to tell you what really bothers me about this whole thing though because the the double standards are just their insanity the same arguments that I used to see made for LeBron to win MVP are now being used against Giannis by the same people so check this out right I want you to imagine that Giannis and LeBron have switched places I want you to imagine that LeBron is having something comparable to the season that Giannis is having right now and he's having it on the Bucks and his second best player is Chris Middleton and he's playing on that team right and I want you to imagine that Giannis is on the Lakers and he's having the season that LeBron is having both good seasons by the way but I think one is pretty clearly better than the other but now they switched right but Giannis is having that season and his second best player is AD LeBron's got the better record he's got the better numbers by everywhere he's got the better defense and he's doing it all without another MVP candidate on his team now I want you to imagine a world where the media has now chosen Giannis to win MVP in that situation and not LeBron and not only that but LeBron was far and wide leading rightfully so leading the MVP race the entire year but after a week Giannis has outplayed LeBron he's outplayed the Clippers and now Giannis is the the, the media has wrapped their arms around him and now he's the MVP how do you think that would play over how would that feel would that feel right and I'm talking about LeBron at any age by the way let's not let's not confuse it with the whole so year 17 Wash King 35 no 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 I'm talking about LeBron at any point in his career having this type of season that Giannis is having in the exact same situation that's what I'm talking about be honest with yourself could you actually imagine that I don't think that you could because anytime and I mean anytime a player has had more help than LeBron anytime a player has had another superstar with him and was in the MVP race or leading the MVP race the argument has always come down to oh look at the team he's on what if LeBron had that team it's always come down to that and now LeBron has another guy who might be top five in the MVP race he has another guy who is not going to win defensive player of the year but is in that race he has a legitimate like you you can't wash this one over anymore you can't do anything they, they, they tried it with Kyrie Irving they tried it with Chris Bosh Dwayne Wade Kevin Love said all these things about these players about why they actually weren't that good anymore and why they actually weren't that much help for LeBron you can't play that game with Anthony Davis anymore Anthony Davis leads the Lakers in points he leads the Lakers in rebounds he leads the Lakers in blocks there's literally nothing you can say about that guy anymore to bring him down the way they brought down his teammates in past years to put him up in an MVP race you can't do it with AD but you know what here comes the part about nuance because that point was brought up in the podcast and it didn't take more than two days for me to be tagged in a tweet claiming that I, I called Anthony Davis the best player on the Lakers which it's funny because in that same podcast I literally referred to LeBron as the best player in the NBA and said that he's been so for most of like the last 10 years so that's just Twitter hearing what they want for you but the reason I bring that up again is because this is the hypocrisy that I see back when there were other players winning MVP over LeBron or if someone was leading LeBron in the MVP race they would look and they would say oh wait this guy that you want to win MVP over LeBron that usually always did he's got a teammate and that teammate is actually leading the team in these stats the absolute most desperate attempt I remember of that was 2016 Curry was clearly the MVP but they were like oh well Draymond Green actually leads the team in assists and rebounds LeBron right now is leading his team in points assists and steals what about that oh okay okay so it was a problem when Curry had a teammate that rightfully so especially because of the system was leading in a couple other stats but now it literally doesn't matter anymore that Anthony Davis leads the team in three major categories that just doesn't matter now hey by the way that's what we've been telling you I actually agree that's not how MVP works LeBron leads Anthony Davis in the MVP race he is a 
above him. LeBron is still the best player on that team. So I, I actually agree with you, but I'm just saying like it, it's really convenient how this has mattered for other players in the past, but now it doesn't matter to a lot of you that are making these arguments that he's won MVP in one week. That's crazy to me. I need that explained. The other argument now that's come full circle is that Giannis is he, he's playing in the East. That's amazing. That's amazing because it makes no sense. <laughs> It makes no sense because the East, for one, is actually competitive. There are four, in my opinion, four legitimate teams in the uh, in the Eastern Conference as we speak. You have the Bucks themselves. Then you've got Toronto, Boston, Miami. And then even back there, the Sixers are having, a uh, for them, a bad season. But still are not a team that people want to see in the first round. You still don't want to have to see like a Ben Simmons and an Embiid. And through some parts of the season, it's looked like maybe they can give the Bucks an issue. But uh, I'm not counting on it because there's a lot of extracurricular things going on there. But point remains, it's a more competitive conversation conference than it's been. This is not like 2017 depending on Isaiah Thomas to bring your team to the finals. That's This is not that. This is not like depending on DeMar DeRozan to dethrone somebody. Anyways, the Bucks are 19-6 and six against Western Conference teams, so they're not exactly struggling when they have to play what I guess people are now using in their benefit as the tougher conference, as, t as the tougher teams, which by the way, again, we agree. We've been saying that for a very long time. However, now there is a group of people that are conveniently using that after strongly opposing it for years but whatever. Despite all of that, I saw a take yesterday that said, I can't give Giannis the MVP when the best player in the conference after him is Pascal Siakam. I think some would argue that it's probably Joel Embiid. Regardless, that's cool because I guarantee you if you hop into a time machine and you ask the same person, could they have given LeBron James the MVP when the next best player in the conference was, hell, playing on the team with him? I guarantee you there probably was not an issue then. But you know what? We're in narrative wasteland now. The media is heavily entrenched in narrative wasteland. And it, it's amazing because as I said at the beginning of the video I've never seen I've never seen it all happen like this it almost it has me suspicious almost as were they told to make this a race just to make it interesting like is this a ratings thing because it happened with such a coordinated all at the same time right like it wasn't like back in November or December or whatever we had a race and somebody thought we had a race and most people didn't know I'm watching it all happen at the same time where people very closely together are either like oh this is much closer which by the way it is much closer after this week or the ones that are saying he's flat out leading now that's just propaganda that's crazy it's setting people up for disappointment and once again nuance you can't appreciate what lebron james is doing without trying to shoehorn him into first and disappointing yourself you can do that i have been watching most of his games this season this is amazing i was just thinking yesterday after the clippers performance i was like wow i've really been watching important lebron games on sundays pretty much for the like the better part of 10 years now i'm really gonna miss this this is incredible i had a lot of fun that game i cannot wait to see that in the playoffs i hope the lakers go far hell be, be, this, despite my pick being the bucks and clippers for the finals i can admit the most exciting finals we could possibly have this year would be lebron and Giannis. i won't be half disappointed if it turns into that instead i think most years that lebron james doesn't win mvp he is still the best player in the nba in fact the only year that i would argue that there was even an argument for that would have been 2016 that year curry was the mvp and he very well could have been the best player that's the only one i would and again that's that's a debate that's the only time i would have that argument every other year i thought kevin durant deserved the mvp in 2014 i still thought thought LeBron was the best player. You can go all the way through that and pretty much find the same thing. You asked me to say who the best player in the NBA is. I still think it's LeBron James. I still see some limiting things in Giannis's game. Some things that make me worry if the Bucks are going to be upset in the playoffs again or not. I do see those things and I can see all of that and accept all of that and still say, okay, the MVP race is something different. If we're talking about the MVP race over the course of the season, right now it's Giannis. It's been Giannis. I saw a tweet that encapsulated this perfectly. It basically said that in November, or it, it went through and listed every month where they've showed the, the contendent that they've put up against Giannis in second place. But Giannis has consistently been in first place. Basically, as to say, we can see who's leading it. We can see who has been leading it. And I thought that I, th I thought that summed it up pretty perfectly. And I can think that without taking away from what he's done this season. Because at the end of the day, all that's happened is the counter MVP theory. That's all that's happened. Hell, two and a half weeks ago, the league had Jason Tatum fever. He was lighting it up, he was playing amazing. Everyone's forgotten about him now because the Celtics have lost a couple of games. So, if you don't want to disappoint yourself, watch for the trend lines. Again, Giannis has taken a step back through this week, no doubt, because at the end of the day, no matter how far away the race might have been, it is still a race. There's still distance to be gained or lost, and so he's lost distance this week. But unless he does a 180, unless he comes out of this injury just just playing trash and the Bucks string losses while LeBron keeps his play up and the Lakers keep winning, I'm 
not sure that's likely. We are going to get something more like the Bucks are going to continue winning. Maybe not 70 games, but they're going to continue at a good place. Giannis is going to keep throwing up stupid numbers. LeBron is going to keep playing great. And then when it's time for people to vote, what's likely going to happen is they're going to, just like they've done all these other MVP races, take the entire season into account. And LeBron is going to get some first place votes, but Giannis is going to end up with more. And those of you who have chosen to buy into this week blindly and just throw someone into first when another player has been very deserving the entire year, you're going to be disappointed for no reason. You're going to be yelling robbery for no reason. Bank on it. Giannis will have to do a 180 for LeBron to win this MVP. I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you from the past how it's win. I don't think this is that difficult to figure out. Just sit and ask yourself. If the trend line stay the same, as in Giannis keeps doing what he's been doing all year, and LeBron keeps on his trend and he's playing great and the Lakers are winning, but you're counting the whole year. Do you seriously see LeBron getting more first place votes than Giannis? Do you really believe in your heart that's going to happen? Think about it. There is no reason for you to be sitting there being disappointed this summer. I think this is very predictable. I think there are very few instances where this whole thing switches, and it could happen, but I think the more obvious thing is right in front of you the way it is most years. 